when scientists took a hydrogen lamp, which is simply an evacuated sealed tubing, which is filled, is evacuated from air and filled with hydrogen, when they, they applied high voltage, they saw this red color. And when they passed it red, red color from a small slit and then pass it through prism, they were able to separate different wavelengths of the light and they end up with these four visible lines in hydrogen gas. And they measured the wavelength of these lines and you see the wavelengths are here in nanometer. This is uh, probably 420 nanometer and maybe 450 nanometer and mm, 660 na nanometer. But what was interesting was the fact that these lines are like fingerprint of hydrogen. In other words, if you see this line spectrum, you know you are dealing with hydrogen. In fact, if you take this setup, which is called a spectrometer uh, or a spectroscope, and look at uh, stars at night, you are going to see these pattern of color. You are going to see the line spectrum of the hydrogen, which is telling us that uh, the stars are made out of hydrogen. The energy they produce is result of conversion of hydrogen to helium. So this was, again, another problem they had to answer. How come every element is showing its own char characteristic line spectrum? And what is this telling us about the structure of atom? For example, you see alkali metal, you're showing this spectrum, and these are only the visible spectrum. And alkaline earth metal, this is the line spectrum, and every metal and gases showing their own a specific line spectrum. So scientists were trying to understand this. Where is this emission coming from? Why is it having different colors? So at the time, everybody, everybody was believed that light is composed of waves. And what are waves? Waves are disturbance that transfer energy through matter or even through space. Wave of light can go through vacuum, can go through space, while sound waves cannot transfer throughout the vacuum. So these were questions. What are waves made of? Light is made out of wave. How, how come atoms of hydrogen, when they get excited, they are producing certain wavelengths? So another definition of light was defined as electromagnetic waves. Why electromagnetic waves? Well. I already showed you some demonstrations before in chem 2 a that if you have a charged particle moving, a moving charged particle is going to produce magnetic field. The opposite is also correct. If you have a moving magnet, it can produce electrical charge. So in fact, if you get a magnet and move magnet, with a very high frequency, 4,000, bigger, bigger pardon, 450 trillion times per second. If you move a magnet 450 trillion times per second, you are going to produce red light. Now, why? Well, we say light is made out of electromagnetic waves. As we are oscillating the magnet, we are producing a magnetic field, which is vibrating, which is changing. Changing of magnetic waves are going to produce electrical wave. And electrical wave are oscillating in a plane which is perpendicular to the plane of magnetic waves. So magnetism and electricity are cousins of each other. They can produce each other. Changing magnetic fields produces 
electrical current. And electrical current can produce magnetic field. So let's focus on waves. If we are dealing with waves, is it fair to say that waves have got wavelengths? When you have an oscillating waves, the distance between two maximum is called wavelength. And the height of a wave from its center is called amplitude. All right, so I'm going to define some properties of electromagnetic radiation. As we said, we have oscillating waves and these waves, you have certain number of peaks per second per unit of time, we call this frequency. So what is frequency? Number of the peaks which passes through a point in a space in unit of time. That's the definition of frequency. We use the letter nu, the Greek letter nu, to show frequency of electromagnetic radiation. And then we also said electromagnetic radiation has got wavelengths. The wavelength, we use lambda to show wavelengths. And wavelength, as you saw before, is the distance between one wave peak to the next, the distance between two peaks of the waves. And then waves have got amplitude, and amplitude shows intensity of the light. The brighter the light, the higher amplitude, and amplitude is the distance of the peak of the wave with the center of the wave. So this is showing the frequency of electromagnetic radiation. And up here, you see wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation. These are in meters. So you see among this huge spectrum of electromagnetic radiation, starting from gamma ray, going to X-ray, ultraviolet, visible is a tiny window. It's a very small portion of the electromagnetic radiation that we can actually see. We cannot see infrared, we cannot see microwave, we cannot see radio waves. And do you see, as I move from left to right, the wavelengths are starting with a very short wavelength and becoming as large as size of a human. So the energy is very high. Lots of energy in short wavelengths radiation, gamma ray, extremely energetic, very dangerous. And if you look at the frequency, do you see higher frequency belongs to higher energy radiation? And lower frequency relates to longer wavelengths. So as we said, frequency, which is number of oscillation, number of waves passing a point in a space in one second, frequency is directly related with energy of electromagnetic radiation. And frequency is inversely related with wavelength of electromagnetic radiation, the larger, wavelength, less energy, and smaller frequency. Higher frequency, more energy, and smaller wavelengths. So again, this is, again, this is electromagnetic spectrum. So you see larger wavelengths, that's 700 nanometer, that's red, and if we go any larger than that, we can't see it. It becomes infrared, which is heat waves. And as wavelengths are getting smaller, we are going from red to yellow, to green, to blue and violet. As wavelengths are getting smaller from 700 to 400 nanometer, the energy of the electromagnetic radiation is increasing. And again here, larger wavelength, larger wavelengths, less energy, smaller wavelengths. 
the smaller wavelengths, more energy. All right. So, is there a relationship between a speed of electromagnetic radiation, frequency, and wavelengths? Now, what is the definition of speed? Can I say speed is defined as amount of the distance per unit of time? So if I have the wavelengths and I know number of waves passing through a point, that's frequency. I can calculate speed. Speed of light is wavelength of the light times its frequency. So we can relate these three together. And let's see if we can do a problem here. Can, I, can you use this formula and calculate the speed of a laser light? I'm sorry, calculate the wavelength. Can you use this formula we just discussed to calculate wavelength of a laser light, which has, uh, I'm sorry, let's do it again. Can you calculate the frequency of a laser light, which has got a wavelength of 630 nanometer? So we want you to apply the formula that you just learned. This is the speed of light. We are giving you the wavelength. Can you calculate the frequency? Go ahead and do this. Please go ahead and do this. Let me know if you got the right answer. If you didn't, please come over and ask me to do this problem for you. And if I go to the next slide, similar to the previous problem. A photon has a frequency of 6.0 times 10 to the power of 4 hertz. That's the number of frequency per second. Can you convert frequency into wavelengths in nanometer? And can you tell us that this frequency falls in visible region or not? So can I say speed of light is frequency times wavelength. We have the speed of light, 2.9979 times 10 to the power of eight meter per second. And we are giving you frequency, we are giving you nu. So all you have to do, solve this equation for lambda. Can I divide both sides by nu and say lambda is equal to speed of light divided by frequency and then plug in the numbers. The problem says speed of light is given already. I plug it in in the top for C. And then frequency is given to be 6.0 times 10 to the power of 4 hertz. Hertz is the same as per second. Number of vibrations per second is called hertz. So. If you plug in these numbers, use your calculator, you should get the wavelength in meter. And since we have got the information in nanometer, I'm going to, and problem was asking wavelength in nanometer, so I'm going to convert this to nanometer. Every meter is 10 to the power of nine nanometer. So you use that as a conversion factor. So you have the wavelengths. And then if you look at this electromagnetic radiation, where is wavelength of 5.0 times 10 to the power of 12 nanometer coming from? This is 10 to, to minus 12, 10 to the 12. It's really huge wavelengths. That means it's not a visible range. A visible range would have been here, but we are looking at wavelengths which are huge. So no, the, this particular electromagnetic radiation is not 
visible to us. 